Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Today I have, alhamdulillah, a very, very special guest. A, uh, a brother who's very close to Sheikh Imran Hussein. And um, in fact, uh, his name is Dr. Uh, Umar Zaid. He um, was a teacher at the Islamic University of Malaysia, I believe, for some time. And uh, he's written many books. He's a polymath. He's a renaissance man. He understands the world today probably better than I probably better than anyone really and he has written uh, at a very high academic level so he can answer questions that are very very uh, important uh, for the for the world that we live in so I want to um, uh, uh, Dr. Omar if you want to say anything uh, in addition to what I've already said then uh, please do so Okay, well, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May it please uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us uh, His refuge and grace uh, in this hour or so that we spend together here online. That uh, those who choose to listen to us may be able to gain some benefit uh, and understanding. Amen. Yeah. Now, uh, yeah, people think I'm a polymath, and perhaps I am. Uh, I don't think of myself that way. Um, by profession, I'm a medical doctor and homeopath. I haven't practiced in 20 years now, but uh, I did uh, back in the day, as they say. And since then, I had to, uh, since leaving America, I had to reinvent myself for various reasons, especially after I converted to Islam uh, while I was living in the jungles of Borneo. You see, I had uh, anticipated what's taking place now years and years ago, back in the 90s in America. And um, I had at that time a good income working as an emergency room doctor. And so I married a lady, a good Christian lady from uh, Malaysia and built uh, a farm in the jungle uh, of the uh, Borneo Mountains just outside of Kuching, about 50 to 60 kilometers uh, north um, of uh, Kuching in East Malaysia. After I converted to Islam, uh, I had to leave all of that behind, and I'll leave that story for another day maybe it's not really it's of interest to people who know me but in any case i found myself a stranger in a strange land and without any resources i spent all of my savings on building this farm i had done exactly what imran hussein had said and i i didn't know him i went to live with the um, indigenous people the bedouin of Borneo, if you will, in the mountains, in the jungle. And I was raising ducks and chickens and fish and actually selling them in the wet market. Malaysia would not give me a license to practice medicine. Australia did. I worked there on the locum spaces for a few years, but that was just too demanding as I was getting older and living out of a suitcase in a hotel, so I stopped. And then my wife at the time was getting sick. So, all of these things I've done, and everything that I had uh, anticipated uh, has now is now coming to pass, and I had prepared myself. We were essentially um, independent. We grew our own food, we had land, we had fruit trees, we had grew our own veggies, we had fish, we had chickens, we had ducks. And we had eggs and all the essentials that you would need. We even grew our own rice. I, I, I'm the only white man that the few villagers there have ever seen out in the rice field. <laughs> Planting rice. I did it for four years. Harvested it in, in the whole nine yards. All of that was taken away from me when her family divorced me after I became a Muslim out of uh, fear and ignorance because the Muslims in Malaysia had treated her tribe for 400 years with the greatest uh, 
of the descent, breaking, mm. pillaging, all that sort of thing. So, and I didn't realize all of this. I had to learn afterwards because I was shocked by the family's reaction. Uh, as I had been a good provider and I was good to the family and everything, but when I divorced, they divorced me. When I when I converted, they divorced me. And, and I, I lost, lost everything, everything that I had. Then I found out that they, they I had joined the tribe of the traditional enemy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this was a very uh, interesting phenomenon. So it left me uh, down near uh, penniless and uh, friendless uh, in a strange country. And by then, my medical license and everything had run out back in the States. And uh, uh, I, I had, had no intention of going back to the state anyway. I was a true expat, so I had to remake myself. And at that time, while I was farming, and after the a certain incident that happened during my, I was a bit of a Christian missionary, and I was thrown out of the church for um, teaching the truth about Christmas and whatnot. So I began to investigate this uh, this whole business a bit more seriously after that took place, and I began writing the book. And I remember my wife coming to look at me, my wife at the time before we had separated, and before my conversion, she came to look at the computer screen and was terrified by what I was writing. She had been a Christian missionary. So these things which I was discovering, I put into a book called Trinity, Mm. Uh, the metamorphosis of myth. And uh, after I lost everything, uh, I had to uh, earn a living somehow. And uh, a kind gentleman from Kuala Lumpur came across my work online. I was trying to get it published. And uh, he promised to publish it as long as I um, uh, joined him and um, and work so, but, but what, what he wanted to do was actually enslave me. me. And, and I, I said, no, I don't want to work at those rates. I'll do piece work for you. Editing is what I was, he was asking me to do. But he was an independent publisher. So <clears throat> that didn't work out. And uh, so I had to eat a living. Meanwhile, the Malaysian government thought I was working for the CIA for some reason. And uh, they sent people... I was, I was looking, looking for work in Kuala Lumpur. They, they sent people after me, the, the secret police in Puching, followed everywhere that I contacted. They went to the melee person in charge and said, don't hire him, he's a CIA agent. We're trying to get rid of him, okay? So that led me to, the, the, the director of the Kirkim, the top uh, missionary, Islamic missionary uh, institution, Dr. Arvin to hire me came to me one day. We had we had we had, uh, we had become friends, and he's one of the finest uh, Muslim I met in that land, in that city. Very great gentleman. Um, and he came to me one day and he said, "Look," uh, he said he was trying to help me get the passport. I mean, the uh, visa and everything, hire me for the missionary and whatnot, and they couldn't do it. And, and he, he said, said, look, you, you better leave. The, the, the uh, secret police have been to see me, and uh, they're, they're going, going to jail, jail you if you don't leave the country. Hmm. So I said, okay, what can I do? <laughs> I what I would like to ask is, how are you trusting Allah, the spiritual aspect in all this? I mean, you're oh, going through oh. so much, and, and how is that inner struggle going? This is a very interesting thing, because uh, I, I'm a new Muslim, but as I, as I explored Islam, at least in the books, uh, what I found confirmed everything that was already in my heart. So this thing that people call Fitra and Hidayah uh, were, 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 were blossoming in me. And, uh, and mind you, I'm not a classical uh, Islamic scholar, so if you throw all these Arabic terms at me, I'll probably get lost and a bit flustered. Um, 
even though I worked at uh, uh, one of the top Islamic graduate schools, it was a, a unique situation, a unique circumstance there. But getting back to this thing, uh, Imam, you see, before I become a Muslim, while I was still farming, I would rise every morning at sunset, so before sunrise, and I would pray. And at sunset, after the day, I would pray. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this was normal for me. So when I read about these things in the Quran, I said, hey, I'm already doing this. This is natural. Hmm. This is cheap. This is what they call Petra. Hmm. And so I was already on this, this stream of thought. I was already in the complete and total trust in Allah. So much so that if I was, I was ready, ready to, to step, step off the cliff. cliff. I, I knew that Allah, Allah would catch me. Subhanallah. You see? And, and I, I think, think until, until people get to that point, they don't really understand Iman. It's, it's like, like uh, you, you know, know the story of the Prophet, Prophet uh, Salam, when he was uh, on his way to Medina running from the Meccans, and he hid in the cave. Hmm. Well, he didn't make any plans for that. He found the cave and da da da. da. Lo and behold, the spider weaves a web. Mm -hmm. Well, this is what Allah does. Okay. Allah has done this for me repeatedly. I, I have many stories like that. Hmm. So, uh, Iman for me under these circumstances was just normal. And I remember collapsing in the corner after. I had, I had converted, converted and my, my wife's family had confronted, confronted me and told me I had to leave. They all left the house, including my wife, uh, and I collapsed in the corner and I left. Hmm. Then after I finished we, we crying, I looked up, you know, through the ceiling to heaven, you know, this main video, and I said, okay, Allah, if this is what you want, I'm your man. Hmm. <laughs> it's just like that. You see, so well, for me, this thing in mind was was natural. It was like the the schoolboy on the way to school, whistling with the birds. Uh, you know, there there was no doubt. I never had doubt in my mind. It never entered me. Um, I suppose that's a, a grace from Allah. It would have to be because most men are filled with doubt. But that was not one of my qualities, one of my attributions. Never, never has been, been still isn't. isn't. Uh, so, so not, not that, that I haven't doubted certain things, but I never doubted Allah's guidance. I never doubted doubted Allah's protection. Uh, I feared Allah as all men do, and when I sin, I, I fear repercussions. Sure, but I never doubted Allah's love and protection and guidance for me. So. As, As I, I entered, entered this, this whole sphere, and Dr. Arndt <laughs> uh, gave, gave me that uh, ultimatum, and I said, okay, well, Allah, Allah will provide, provide but, but I didn't know how, I didn't know, hmm, anyway. So, so I'm, I'm on, on a, a train, train, and I, I meet a Buddhist monk, monk. Hmm. and this monk, monk is traveling back to Thailand, Thailand. Uh, and he's, he's a missionary. A and he's, he's one, one of the, the Buddhist, Buddhist monks from a certain particular sect, sect that, that doesn't, doesn't believe in idols. Okay. Okay. There, there are such. The, the Zen Buddhists, Buddhists are like that. that. They, they have to go to their temple. There's absolutely no idol there. Um, and uh, so, so he and I come into a conversation, and he mentioned uh, a friend of his who was looking for an English teacher. Hmm. So I said, uh, oh, okay. I'll contact, I'll contact them. Do you have their number? number? He, he said, said sure. sure. And, and he called them for me <laughs> mm. on the train. And, and I, I talked to them, and they hired me over the phone. Mm. So, so I had, had a job, job in Bangkok waiting for me, and all, all I needed, needed was money to get there. there. And good Dr. Arafin, you know what that good man did? I will tell you what that good man did. He went home after he found out and that I had his job. And he reached into his bedroom drawer where he had kept a certain amount of U.S. dollars uh, in, hidden away in a little packet for 30 years. 
<laughs> and he came to visit me and he handed them to me. And it was just enough money to get me to Bangkok and to feed me for the first month. Hmm. So, so this, this is what Allah, Allah does. does. You don't understand. This is how it is. And, and this has been my experience, and I have many stories like that. that. So, so, in answer to your question, uh, that, that is, is my experience, experience living experience of Imam. Uh, and, and I, I, I often, I, I, I get, I have some students. I have an online forum, and sometimes, sometimes they get discouraged and. So, so I reach into my bag of experience, experience and I tell them a story. <laughs> and, and then they go, they, they brighten up, and they say, yes, Allah is great. great. They, uh, 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 Muslims tend to, to say, say that, God is great, great all the time, uh, but, but they, they don't, don't really believe it, it because, because they haven't experienced it as great as this. You see, most, most of what you're experiencing these days is, uh, is, is misery and uh, faithlessness and sin and uh, discouragement and legalism and all of these things that uh, take away from Hidayah, take away from guidance. So I am sitting here uh, uh, in Japan right now, uh, blocked in because of this COVID thing. But, but I, I have, have and, and I, I own nothing, you understand? Uh, the only thing I own is my computer. Hmm. Wherever I go now, everything is provided for me. My, my good wife's family, uh, that's another story. They, they, make, they, they make my path in my life easy. And I'm an invalid now, okay? I have multiple sclerosis, I have trouble seeing. Beyond one or two meters, everything I see is double. I am half death, and, and if, if, I, if you see me walking down the street, street, street at 10, 10 o'clock in the morning, you think, think I've been undrunk because of this multiple sclerosis. I can walk, uh, three, three years ago, ago I couldn't walk, walk but, but now I can walk thanks to dietary changes and whatnot. And uh, thank God, uh, I, I, I can manage, but everything I need is provided for me. Now, now, I'll, I'll tell, tell you another, another interesting, interesting story, story while well, I have your listeners' ears, ears about, about this thing called Iman. Okay. okay. Back, Back in the, the 1990s, 1990s, I was a Christian, a very avid Christian, Christian evangelical, evangelical even, and, and uh, involved in um, uh, worship, uh, worship services. services. I'm a musician. I, I wrote sacred music and I performed it. And, and, and one day after church in Panama City, Florida, uh, I, I, was, I stayed behind to do some rehearsing, and uh, while I was packing up my equipment, one of the assistant pastors came to me and said, I have something to tell you. He said, I believe it's from God. I had a dream, and in that dream, a man came to me and said, you tell Joseph this. I was called Joseph at the time. Everybody called me Dr. Joseph or Dr. O. And, uh, he said, there will come a day when you will own nothing, but you will have everything. SubhanAllah. This was 25 years ago, maybe even earlier. Yeah, I think close to 30 years ago when that happened. So I'm, I'm living it. You understand? You're talking unto a man who is living Imam. It's not a joke. It's not an abstract idea. It is a confirmed reality. <laughs> I, I'm one of the least religious Muslims you would probably ever want to meet, okay? Uh, so, uh, in answer to your question, I, I think maybe that's enough. We can move on to uh, another one. It's so, let me ask, let me start yeah. by asking this. Hmm. Are we entering a new normal? Oh, a new normal. With the yeah. virus and it's all the things that are happening? It's not normal, dear brother. Dear Sheikh, it's not normal, no. Okay. This is just, this is, it, 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 you, it, 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 that's a, that's a, what they call a, a thalemic turn, new normal, okay? It's a lie. It's, first of all, it's not new, and secondly, it's not normal. 
Okay. Yeah, it means yeah. new. I stand corrected. Local, okay. It, it's a global form of tyranny, but tyranny like this has existed before. It just never on at this extent. And it's an answer uh, to... It, it's, it, we're, we're living, uh, we're, we're living out the prophecies, okay? So uh, it, it's, it's a new form of tyranny, if we want to put it that way. Uh, but it's not normal. It's anything but normal. Because everything that is truly human is being taken away from us. Uh, all forms of human expression are being taken away, except those which are approved. And approved by who? Well, this is the beast. It is the beast. Uh, how do you define this beast? Well, you, you know that famous painting by, um, uh, oh, what's his name? Uh, I've forgotten his name now. Um, it's the painting is called Guernica. Uh, it's a, from the Civil War, the Spanish Civil War. Okay. And, uh, uh, you have it in your mind now? Yes. They, yeah, yeah, I, I've, I've forgotten, forgotten the, the, the artist's name. name. It'll come to me in a minute. Yes. Uh, and, and anyway, anyway there's, there's a, there's a, there's a, a that, that, that painting uh, depicts the beast hmm. in its entirety, including the mark of the beast. If you look at the, I, 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 I put an ex, I, I, I put a, um, an article on this, an essay on this year ago uh, on my blog, and the citizens of Guernica actually wrote to me and asked me to remove it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's how insulted they were. Because, because, you see, see the, the mark, mark of the beast is on the, the, the slang I, man. Was it P P uh, Picasso, is what I'm seeing on Picasso. the internet? Yes, Picasso. It's Picasso. Okay, Thank yeah, that's what I'm seeing on the internet, and yeah. At, at, at the, the base, base of the, the film, film, there's a slain man, man, okay? And, and on, on his, his arm uh, is the cross. Okay. The cross is scarred on his arm. And in his palm is the pentagram. Okay? Okay. This, this, Picasso's telling, telling you, this guy died because, because he served the cross, the cross <laughs> and the mark of the beast <laughs> is in his palm. That, that cross belongs to the beast. Oh. Belongs to the beast. Oh. Picasso was telling us this, and at the top of the painting, there is this um, light lamp. Yeah, the eye. Like yeah. You remember the end? It, it's, it's an eye. Yeah, it's, it's the eye. It's, it's the it's the eye of the beast, and, and over then, then you see the Madonna, Madonna and the child. The child. <coughs> Let well, me show our it? viewers this picture so that they're clear about this too. Yes, they're very clear. Uh, about it. And, and if you look over to the that you see, uh, there's, there's a lady also in the middle. middle. She's, She's just been uh, murdered, murdered by the the the, the, the war, war activities, activities. and an the angel is picking her up, picking her spirit up, and delivering her to heaven, and is pointing to a prophetic image that is in the beast, uh, that is in the picture which she escaped right now. And behind that woman is a man being fed into a furnace with teeth. All of it is there. It's not just about war. Picasso is telling us who is responsible and, and what, what they are doing. doing. He, he knew. knew. Okay. Mm. So, this, this uh, you, you should, should uh, you, you, you look, look, look this up, up on my website because I've explained it there uh, in okay, some yeah, detail. Very interesting. And um, so, so what, what, what's, what's happening, happening is that the beast has become, become exactly what uh, uh, Scripture said it's going to be. And it's so all encompassing, it's so powerful. It, it cannot, cannot be fought, fought against. against. Okay? You, you cannot, cannot win a battle, a battle against, against these things. things. No, no one can. can. Unless they are given a license by Allah to assault the beast. The beast. Hmm. Okay? Now, now this, this is why, why if, this, if the stories, stories about the Mahdi are true, then this is why he must count. Hmm. 
If the stories about Jesus' return are true, this is why, because they're the only ones with a license to do this. Everyone else does not have a license. Now, what do I mean by license? Look at the story of our Peter and uh, Musa. Okay. Okay, now, uh, al did, did some things that if today he were to do them, most Muslims would probably lock him up. Right. Okay. And why? Because they're not on Hidayah. al Qaeda had license to do what he did, but it was licensed directly from heaven, divine license. Okay. And... This, this is, is something, something that, that Muslims, Muslims do not understand. understand. They, they do, do not understand this license. We, we have, have all these young men, men taking the license themselves. themselves. It's, it's, it's like they're storming heaven, heaven and telling heaven, heaven I'm, I'm going, going to do, do this, this for you. you. <laughs> right, <yes. laughs> this is the stupid <laughs> idea. Foolish. Foolish. They, they do, do not, not have the license. license. Did Jibreel come, come to tell them? them? No, no, but maybe, maybe some, some dead sheikh did <laughs> in the form of the jinn. You mm. see? And he said, ah, ah you, you are special. special. You have a license. That you will do this. And, and then, then they're, you know, because, because they're not on the diet, because they do not understand the imam, and there's a lack of leadership. Okay. Are you with me? I'm with you. I'm 100% with you. There's, There's a, a lack, lack of leadership, leadership in the Ummah. I'm, I'm talking, talking about righteousness. Hmm. I'm, I'm talking, talking about honesty. I'm, I'm talking about frankness. People, people who are bold enough to get, get up and say, go kill, kill that, that damn witch. witch. Hmm. Yeah? Kill, kill her, her now. <laughs> so <laughs> I, 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 I'll, I'll give you, I'll I'll give you an example. example. I have, I have talked, talked to a, a lot, lot of people uh, very, very close, close to leadership in Malaysia. Malaysia. Uh, I, I was, was at, at the, the house of the um, chief in imam, imam, imam of the KLCC mosque. Now, now he's, he's just a phone call away from the prime minister, this fellow. Hmm. And, and I was invited to his house to give talks like this several times. times. Not, Not at, at his, his instigation, instigation, but at his, his wife, because his, his wife was the one who was receiving Hidayah. Hmm. She was the, the one who was getting the truth, and, and she was trying to feed him and, and her family, family her relatives and whatnot. whatnot. So, so I, I, I went and uh, I, I, I gave my uh, talk, and uh, you know we, we had, had a meal, meal, and there was prayer. Sometimes it was uh, we had our own. Uh, sort of Juma there, there. Uh, and, and they, they, they would always ask me to lead prayer, but I was afraid to do so because <laughs> my Arabic is not good and I'm, I'm, I'm just shy about, about that. that. So um, after everybody had left, he and two of his uh, relatives, I don't know if they were sons or nephews, or, uh, came to me and they, and they brought a woman and they, they had a problem, and uh, they wanted to, my advice. Why my advice? I, I don't know. To this day, I don't know, but they asked me. And here's what the situation was. I want to give you an example of how terrible Muslim leadership really is. This woman had been divorced by her husband, who kept their children. Now, this, this was the imam's uh, 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 niece, okay, okay. Daughter, daughter of one of the men standing with me. me. And, and these were all people in the know, hmm. one, one step, step two steps, steps away from the prime, prime minister's office, okay, in Malaysia, all, all of them. them. They're, They're asking, asking me, hmm. what do? And so. I, I said, said, okay, okay what's, what's the problem? The problem? Why, why, why are you divorced and everything? And then the woman spoke up. And she said, he's having sex with my children. And I confronted him with this, and he divorced her. Okay. He kept the children, threw her out. So they want to know what to do. 
And I said, well, have you taken this to the courts? And they said, yeah, he owns the courts. <laughs> and uh, I said, well, then you'll have to kill him. <laughs> oh, my God! Oh, oh my, you might have thought that I was Iblis himself. No, you have to kill a man like that. If there is no recourse, then you have to do it yourself. I said, and you have to do it. it. And, and if, if you, you don't, don't have the courage to do it yourself, yourself at least pay some mafioso who does. Way him in the, in the back alley, alley put, put a bullet in the back of his skull, and, and have, have done, done with the problem. problem. Yeah. And, and if, if you, you don't, don't do that, that I said, you find this lady another husband in another country. Get her out of here and get her new children. Okay? There's, There's nothing, nothing can else can be done. done. Shock. Okay. Now, now, these, these are, are all Muslim, Muslim leaders. leaders. Okay. okay. The, the courts, courts are Muslim. Muslim. The, the country, country is run, run by Muslim. Muslim. Mm. They, they are, are protecting, protecting the creatures. Okay. And, and suffering, suffering the innocents innocent to be violated, violated like, like that. that. And, and everybody, everybody knows about it, it. And, and nobody, nobody does nothing. nothing. In, in a, a country, country like, like that, that, in a situation like that, in an ummah like, like that, that, how can you receive guidance? guidance? Yeah, how and can you? How, how are, are the young, young men to respond? respond? Okay. okay. They're, They're not, not wise, wise enough to know what to do. do. And, and there's, there's no one wise in position to tell them, to guide them. So they run wild. And, and they, they run, run wide also, also because, because their leaders are taking too much money and they can't afford to live decently and marry. <laughs> so, so the, none, none of this, this is normal. normal. And, and so, so now, now you say, oh, a new normal? normal? No, no, this is not normal. normal. It's, it's already abnormal. abnormal. It's going to get worse. worse. It's only going to get worse. There will be more blood in the spirits of that and it's going to become global. Uh, Dr. Omar, do you have a timeline in mind yeah, of, oh, of right. the coming events, or, or do do we have a timeline? Is is there, or or are we, or is are we not looking at a timeline? Are we moving forward looking at a timeline, or are we moving forward not looking at a timeline? Well, I, I, I ran, ran a timeline time before, before I became a Muslim. And, and I determined, determined something close to 2030 uh, for the, the day of Armageddon. And, and I discussed this once with uh, Sheikh Imran Hussein. And, and he had run his own timeline according to what he knew from Islamic eschatology. Mm -hmm. We compared notes. Yeah, yeah. And I came up with 2030, he came up with about 2028. So <laughs> he was very close. <laughs> okay. But, but what, what uh, 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 this, this present move, which is COVID and this global shutdown and the, the entire sham, because it's a sham, this virus is, you know, well, it's, it's a weapon, it, it is a killer. It has made sure Americans have given up the first article of the Constitution. Yeah. We're not allowed to assemble or protest or come outside our houses. It's like the same as being in Egypt or any other Middle, Coast, Middle Eastern country where you can't, you know, get together with anyone. Yeah, yeah. This, is un, this is unheard of in the history of America. And for, it's completely and totally un-American, you see. There's nothing normal about it. Not that America is normal, but it had its own norms. Uh, yeah, even within the under the umbrella of manifest destiny, which is a lie from hell. Uh, but at least America had some saving grace uh, at one time. Now all of that is gone. All of it is gone. And the trouble is, okay, that the generations coming up behind you are stupid. Really stupid. They cannot be informed. Even if you try to inform them, they don't have enough knowledge to comprehend what people like I or even yourself are saying. They become so stupid. So 
this new abnormality is shocking. And this timeline, this whole thing with COVID has shocked me. Okay? Mm. I, I'm sitting here, I had the quadruple bypass surgery before, three years ago, almost, almost three years ago. And I'm crippled, uh, but I'm relatively healthy, yeah, as you can see, uh, as I sit here. I've got a little bit of the pink color to my face and all those sort of things. So the lighting in here is not good, but it's all right. Mm -hmm. I'm okay. And I'm mentally intact. Alhamdulillah. Inshallah. Uh, Alhamdulillah. So I can see these things. I can understand. And I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, okay, well, I already figured about 20, 30. I said, I've got probably about another 10 years to go, so it's not going to be too bad for me. <laughs> you know, uh, people, men think like this. You see, at the campfire, you say, oh, God, what am I going to do? And uh, at least, uh, okay, am I going to have to make a last stand or am I just going to give up? What am I going to do? Right. And uh, I'm saying, okay, well, I'm old, I'm crippled. Uh, we've got about 10 years left. Uh, even if I have to live through two years of it, I suppose that's not, you know, not too bad. So I am out of the picture, I'm thinking. Okay. Then comes this COVID jam. I'm saying, it's 10 years early. Hmm. Yeah. It's 10 years early. So in that in answer to your question, that is uh, that is my answer. Don't ask me for any more specifics because uh, anyone who says they really know is, is, is talking to their hat. Uh, nobody really knows. You can you can have an estimate, maybe even an intelligent estimate, uh, and uh, but all of that has to be based on uh, scripture. Uh, a, a, a knowledge base that founded in scripture and tradition, not just the prophetic tradition, but other traditions as well, because there are several others, and uh, not all religions are not uh, monotheists. I'm not a perennialist, but there are religions that have prophecies from their prophets mm -hmm. that are still extant. If you talk to the Native American, which I have, Mm -hmm. And uh, I went to medical school in South, in South Dakota, and I had some uh, exchanges with uh, the Sioux Shaman uh, there. I attended the sweat box ceremony. It's, uh, as, uh, uh, that, that was an honorable uh, invitation because I had extended protection to the Shaman. I didn't know he was a Shaman. But during the turn to a I saw him out in the street, and I said, come, into my basement. Hmm. So we set the storm out in our basement, and then three months later, we invite, he sends a messenger to me to invite me to the uh, sweat box ceremony. And my, uh, my experience with these people is that they're, they're monotheists, okay? They're monotheists. Uh, some of them have... Um, uh, communication with Jim. Yeah, so that's that that was kind of my uh, understanding of the shamans is is that you know they deal with jinns and and kind of like tell the future based upon that. So obviously yeah. there's a lot I don't know. So well, you, you remember the jinn? They live about five hundred years or so. So uh, they have a longer memory than them, and um, uh, they some of them are Muslim. Okay. Now, when you say Muslim, what does that mean? It means someone who submits to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It doesn't necessarily mean somebody who knows about the Prophet. Right. Okay. It doesn't mean that. So, these are Muslim Him. Uh, and, you know, legalists, Muslim legalists who get caught up in this whole thing, you've got to uh, submit to the Prophet and all this sort of thing. I mean, they're, they're a little bit off the mark here. They're uninformed. They're uninformed. I've studied these things. I've talked with these people. I've talked with the good and the bad. <laughs> I've been with the initiates on the side of the Iblis. Uh, and uh, I've seen how they work. And I've seen how others work. And I don't disturb them. When I read the story of... Um, oh, who was this fellow who traveled east and west? Oh, uh, Zulkarnain? Yeah, Zulkarnain. 
When I came to his story, he found these people, these indigenous people, who asked him to build the wall, and he left them in peace. Right. I said, well, this is what a good Muslim does. You know, you, you don't try to jam the, the, the Quran down their throat. If they're not capable of receiving it, meet them in Allah's grace and just follow Allah's view. Okay? That's it. And, and so, so when I read, I read that story, story, I said, oh, well, this is my kind of prophet, this guy. I like right, this fellow. He's mm-hmm. my kind of Muslim. <laughs> yeah. So um, I've, I've uh, encountered these people, people but, but getting, getting back, back to this whole scene of prophecy and eschatology, you have to take all of these visions into consideration. Yes. Okay. When you're making these kinds of... Um, uh, uh, estimation, because, because what, what we, we have from tradition is incomplete. What we have from the Hadith is incomplete. It's it's, it's got, got lacuna, like <laughs> you know. It's it's, it's, uh, it's it, there, it, there are gaps, gaps here and there, there that you can, can only fill by speculation. speculation. But, but when, when you add knowledge from other sources, sources which is why the the Quran says go out and the prophets says go out and seek knowledge everywhere. Okay, mm-hmm. and, and he doesn't. He, doesn't, he didn't, didn't say go out, out and convert everybody and take their government. government. He, said, he said go out and seek knowledge. knowledge. Okay, the the, the, the look the, the first person to uh, circumnavigate the world that we know of was a Muslim. Mm-hmm. And he worked, worked for the, the Chinese, Chinese emperor. emperor. Okay, okay. I forgot his name, but he did this way before Columbus did. Okay. okay. And, and we, we know, know that, that uh, you know, there's things like, like this that have been going on. The first samurai we were looking So, and, <laughs> and he was the black man to boot. So, um, this, this kind of thing, they didn't go, the, the samurai didn't go to try and take over Japan. You know, he was like a, a, a prophet uh, Dawood. Uh, who, who was, was in, in the, the service, service of a Philistine king, hiding, hiding from King Saul, who was trying to kill him for 20 years. years. Yeah. He, he didn't, didn't try, try to convert, convert the king, king. He, he, he served, served him. him. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's, that's what, what these Muslims, Muslims do. do. So, so when, when you, you go out to seek knowledge, knowledge you, you learn from them, and you don't just sit down at a campfire talk, you've got to hang out there for years. Yeah. You've, you've got to hang with these people, people for years, you've, you've got to read their literature, literature. you've, you've got to speak their language, you've got to understand their metaphysics, and, and that's, that's what the first movement scholars used to do. Right. They used to do this. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I've, I've met many Muslim scholars that, you know, they, they, they speak their native tongue, tongue and they speak Arabic, Arabic and, you know, that's all. <laughs> that's all. Hmm. <laughs> it's, it's not enough. It's, it's, it's insular. insular. Okay. They, they isolate, isolate themselves from the world and then think they're going to be the world savior. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> Please. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I, I hope, hope I'm not outraged. No, no, no. It obviously makes it, sense. And, uh, you know, I'm here in Buffalo and we talk about doing Datwa. And so, you know, we're, we're always talking about the fact that Datwa has to be done with the people that are actually part of the hood, so to say. You know. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, I'm, I'm doing, doing dahwa in, in my wife's village. Okay. okay. I'm, I'm the only Muslim, Muslim, Muslim there. there. And, and most, most of the people in that Thai village, they're all Buddhist. And you can, you can think, think of them as uh, good Catholics. Catholics. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and I was I born and raised Catholic, and, uh, and, uh, which is why I can understand the Buddhists quite easily because, because they're, they're very similar. similar. Their, Their rituals, rituals are very much the same. They light candles, they bow to the statues of the saints and what all the things. Right, right, yeah. So, I'm in this uh, village and they're all deathly afraid of Muslims because of what's going on four years now uh, in the south, south of the country thanks to British Israelism and CIA influence. Uh, the, uh, the insurgencies, insurgencies uh, taking place there. there. I was I invited to join them, but that's, that's another story, story. <laughs> when, when, when I was, I was in, in Malaysia. Anyway, anyway, getting, getting back, back to Dakwa. So, 
People say, well, what are you doing for Dantwa? I said, I'm taking care of my wife. And I'm being an honorable husband. And an honorable provider. And I'm not setting down any bad examples for these people. So that when I leave and they find out I was I'm a Muslim. I was a Muslim. They're going to say, oh my God, that's a Muslim? Hmm. Ah, yeah. Now, now some, some of my, my closest, closest neighbors, neighbors, they can, can hear me when, when I pray, pray if they're, they're up early enough, and some, some of them are. are. My, my house, house is right, right next to a, a Buddhist, Buddhist temple. temple. Right next to a Buddhist temple. I can, I can hear, hear the monks chanting in the morning. Hmm. Hmm. And, and uh, otherwise during the day. So, so my form of dhatwa is adjusted to their circumstance. That circumstance. Right. And, and that, that circumstance is that uh, Allah has provided, provided for me in my old age. age. I'm helpless. <laughs> but but uh, look, I'm, I'm a stranger, stranger in a strange bank, completely dependent upon my wife and her family. family. My, my wife converted, converted, of course, but she didn't tell anybody. Hmm. <laughs> it's, it's, it's all on the, what they call the, the Freemason say the QT. <laughs> it's all on the quiet. So let me ask you some questions about the, uh, obviously, I made a mistake saying the new <laughs> normal, but taking the same theme uh -huh. forward, um, yeah. are the powers in are the power structures in the world? Do they oppose one another, or are they on the same page? Uh, my reading uh, of the Quran seemed to be that even though they're on the same page, but they're not on the same page, kind of thing. Uh, uh, can can uh. you? Uh, elaborate more about yeah, yeah. is is I, I, like, I, I, are the Freemasons or or whoever are are controlling things? Is it real control or is it influence? That's the first question. Second is are they united or are they divided within? Uh, okay. This is a very good question, and it will take a little bit of time to answer. Okay. Knowing as we know how men are, and that we are, unless we are held accountable by our fellows and by our women, okay, uh, and families, we tend to lean towards the shadow, what uh, is called the shadow in psychiatric terms, the, uh, the lower nature, the unredeemed nature. Yeah, Carl Jung used that term. Yeah, 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 Jung used that term. Jung, yeah. I, I really uh, like Jung. I don't know what your opinion is about Carl Jung, but I really like him. <laughs> I like him. <laughs> I, I trust uh, some of his uh, conclusion, but uh, without the uh, revelation, they're incomplete. Okay. Right, of course. And, uh, Jung was a bit of a ladies' man <laughs> as yeah. well. So uh, uh, he, he liked him. Uh, and uh, the other fellow, the other side, Freud. Guy, what's his name? Freud. Uh, Freud. Freud. Yeah, they yeah. They, they practiced a bit what they, they preached. You see, they believe in a certain sexual liberty, uh, and they they practiced it, and they even forced it upon their wives to a greater or lesser degree. Either the wife participated, or she had to tolerate it. Okay. Uh, this, uh, this is, is part, part of the, the, the Frankist movement, movement, the Sabbatean movement, but this goes way, way back to uh, uh, shadow governments during the days of the mystery religion. Okay. And I, I'm just introducing those concepts because uh, I, we can go into them as time goes on, and probably another session. Yeah, we'll have to do another session because we're just like scratching the surface here. Yeah, we're, we're scratching the surface. surface. But, but let, let me put it to you this way. way. Uh, these, uh, the leaders, the men who have chosen evil uh, to serve evil, uh, to service their shadow out of idiocentric uh, interests, selfish interests, the, 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 the Quran calls them the, the selfish people, um, they have always been completely and totally selfish. So even if they're serving a, a, a principality that put in, been put in position by Iblis in China or Japan or wherever, in Afghanistan, 
uh, they're they're still, still, they still they still uh, <coughs> are, are, want to box each other for power. You see, that has been the traditional way. So, uh, war upon war upon war, uh, da, 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 uh, over the centuries, and you know anybody who wants to conquer the world is nuts. Okay, <laughs> but normal people don't think like this. Men do not think like this. Normal people who are subject to future and the diet, do not think like this. Mm -hmm. No man in their right mind wants to conquer the mind, conquer the world. Conquer the mind, yes, but conquer the world, no. no. Not at all. What happened is all these thousands of years, and, you know, it's only this, the, the, to, the, the present age, this Holocene period is only about 12, 10 to 12,000 years long, so it's only a couple of weeks in the, the eyes, in the divine eye, because a thousand years is only one day for Allah Subhanahu One day. So we're only, this present period is only 12 days old, not even two weeks. So, uh, so let's just say for 11,700 years uh, of that period, uh, men have been boxing each other over their shadows. <laughs> Suddenly, Under the influence of pseudo Sufis and uh, Shiite uh, cults out of the Middle East and Jewish cults out of the Middle East, an old system that guided the assassins of Hassan of Hassan al Saba right, okay, uh, has been was resurrected by having Reese help under the direction of and financed by a, the Jewish. Financiers of the day, the Frankfurt Group, and the people like the Rothschild. And they joined forces with the academics. We saw what was a Jesuit, okay? The Jesuits were founded by Moranos Jews. That's now in the status fact. They've been trying to, to, to hide it for years and years, but the definitive paper was just written a few years ago, proving that the Moranos founded the Jesuits. And that uh, 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 Loyola was, in fact, a Jew, a Moranian Jew. And so the Jesuits, the intellectuals, joined with the Jewish... Just, just so that uh, my audience understands, in case uh, they haven't looked at this, Jesuits are like a sub-branch of Catholics, correct? Yes, yes. yes. And, and, and they're kind of like the mystical aspect, or they have a certain mystical... Uh, uh, I guess. They, they do... They, 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 they do. do. They, they have, have this mystical element, element, this metaphysical element, element and this element uh, dates back to the Mother Goddess. All of this dates back to the Mother Goddess uh, in Anatolia, and that dates back to Kali in India. Okay. Uh, from the Hindu. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'll, I'll explain that stream. I'm writing about this now. I'm putting it all together in a couple of the essays. And, and I, 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 this stream is, 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 is continuous. It's been continuous. It came together as a triumvirate in the 18th century. And this triumvirate was eventually called the Illuminati. Okay. okay. Now, the historians would like to say, oh, they just faded away and did nothing else after about 50 years or so. But that's not the case. Hmm. What you have is the Jewish messianic cult of the Sabbatean, who became the Donne, who became uh, uh, Muslim in the uh, uh, in, uh, uh, 16th century, in the 16th century in Turkey. You have the Frankists, who are the Donne branch in Germany, the Sabbateans in Germany, and you, you have the Jesuits, and you have the financiers, the Jewish financiers, okay. and they're not all, they're not all Jewish. Many of them are families that date back to the Latins and the Etruscans and the Persians, the ancient Persians that Alexander put into position after he destroyed Babylon, after he conquered that. Okay. And this dates back to a, how shall I say, they date back to a, a cult that twisted the words of Zarathustra, because Zarathustra was a monotheist. 
Okay. Okay. And what came down to us as Zarathustraism today is misunderstood. Got it. Okay. Grossly misunderstood. And if you talk to a true Zarathustrian today, they hate Alexander because he helped their enemies, a false priesthood. Mm -hmm. They just chase to Anatolia, chase to Turkey, and then chase to Rome. And then Rome uh, imbibed them. So these financiers, uh, Attila the Hun chased them out of Rome in the 4th century. And they had to go to Venice, and they had to go to uh, a few other towns, and, uh, and uh, set up shop. And it took them a few hundred years to regain their status, but they never lost their momentum. Hmm. Now, now, these people joined forces, these people joined uh, forces, forces, the financial forces, forces together with the forces of black magic, magic together with the Jesuit intelligentsia. Okay. okay. Uh, like Georgetown University? Have, yes, 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 yes. Now you have this fascist. Now, what is a fascist? It's a threefold cord. Okay? Mm -hmm. It's a threefold cord. And you, the cords are wound up, and you swing them together. It's mm -hmm. very, very difficult to break. Okay, that's what's taking place. This happened in late 18th century, after the French Revolution, during the French Revolution. Okay. This unity. This was the first time in history. In answer to your question, I haven't forgotten. This is the first time in history that the cult was unified. Okay. Unify. Okay. okay. Now, now, what, what did, did they do? do? Where, Where did the Freemasons come in? They infiltrated the Freemasons at that time. Now, most of the Masonic lodges at that time were not what they called speculative. They were operative lodges. They were guilds. They were honest men who had skills. They were builders. They were architects. They were uh, craftsmen. Okay. okay, they were real men. men. Okay, mm -hmm. and, and they had they a had real system, system of education, and they guarded with their knowledge from uh, becoming, becoming profane. profane. Hmm. In other words, and, 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 and this was, was also to protect the quality of work, work right. and, and to protect, protect their territory, their territory mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is natural. That's what right. men do. Right. You know, you, you know, see somebody moving in, he's either got to pay taxes or get hit the road. He's got to join you. <laughs> okay. okay, or he's, he's got, got to leave the road. road. He's, he's got, got to, he's he's got got to go, go to another town. town. So, so these guilds were the strong men at the time. time. What, what the Jesuits did was, was they used the system of, what this fellow called Maimoun, the fellow who found the Patanist and the assassin. The Muslims had a lot, you know, they, you know, they weren't good Muslims, Muslim, but, but, and he was a Jew, but he was a magist from this, from this, uh, from this uh, school, school in uh, Babylon. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, they, they were, were called, called the, he, he was, was uh, the, the, the leader of the Brethren of Purity mm -hmm. at the time. Uh, so, so this, this has a long stream, but, but they, they used my moon's protocol. We have them, okay, okay, to, to formulate a new system to subvert these good men. And they change those lodges, those guild houses, into speculative Freemasonry. Mm. And then they got the spoiled aristocrats to join them. Now, before this time, uh, Masons existed, but they didn't have any aristocracy. Mm. And they, they were their, their own aristocracy. aristocracy. Kings, Kings and dukes, dukes and earls did not mix with craftsmen. Okay. No, no more than more they, they would mix with a, 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 somebody, a, a merchant. They, they just, just wasn't, wasn't done. done. They, they were, were gentlemen, gentlemen and warriors. Warriors, warriors, warriors don't, don't do that thing, those mm -hmm. sorts of things. Okay. Okay. They, they hire people to do that for them. Or you work for me out of a sense of honor and obligation. Okay. Uh, uh, so, so, but after this triumvirate, this fascist was formed, they subverted these lodges and turned them into speculative houses where people began to wonder all sorts of metaphysics about 
you know, cosmology, magic, the world, da, 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 da. And they brought, they, they did this great, they, they, they made this great equalization. They leveled the board. Hmm. And when you level the board, you're doing away with divine order. Yeah. Okay. You're doing away with divine order. So what they did was, they got the dudes and the girls and the kings to join the lodges with the craftsmen. And then they brought in these sneaky Jesuits and Baal Shem uh, Jews, who were the uh, 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 practitioners of Kabbalah, the magic of the Kabbalah. Mm-hmm. Okay. They would join the lodge, and they would, the Jews would get their women to seduce the men, including the guildsmen, who were prior to this unseducible. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, so, so you have a new political order, and it came under the spell of this Freemasonic Lodge. And this Freemasonic Lodge came under the spell of the Grand Master. And the Grand Master was not always known. He was somebody hidden away. They would have two Grand Masters, one that they saw in the Lodge, and another that was somewhere else. Got it. Who, when, when the, the time, time was necessary, necessary gave directed, directed that everyone, everyone had to follow. follow. Are you You're with me? me? I'm with you. So, so now, now you, you have, have the guildsmen and the merchants and royalty, royalty all being subverted <laughs> and, and in the, the same house, under the same roof, roof getting, getting secret messages. messages. <laughs> right. <laughs> all right. And, and this, this became... became a vehicle. a vehicle. It did, it did not, not become, become government. government. It became, became a, a, an, an administration. administration. The, the Freemasons, Freemasons... Now, papers, papers have been written on this. Without, without the Freemasons, Freemasons, the British Empire would never have spread. The Freemasons, the lodges, the lodges are, what are what made it possible. possible. And, and the lodges, lodges in cooperation with other lodges, lodges from other countries made it possible. including the American Revolution. Okay. okay, that's, that's why, why you have, have certain resistance. Does that translate the in the lodges translate into like some sort of relationship with the aristocracy of those different countries? Yes, yes. But, but the, the aristocracy, aristocracy were being perverted, perverted and they were also being, being held, held in debt. debt. Okay, debt. Okay. okay, yeah. Because like the Ottoman because Empire. Of the, yeah, yeah, of the lavish lifestyle. And, and the merchants were taking over, the bankers were taking over, they were subverting the coin, coinage. And, and then they eventually, through the Hanseatic League and the, 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 the Jews that moved into England after Cromwell's uh, visitation, uh, they established the Bank of England and they took over the currency. Mm-hmm. And from then on, the whole plan was a corporation, a world global corporation. Now you have the Commonwealth. The British Commonwealth is the largest corporation the world's ever known. It's larger than every other corporation. And it is, in fact, a corporation. It's registered in the city of London. Not London, in the city, in the financial sector. And it's not subject to the Queen. That's all puppet show. That's all puppet show. Okay. She's subject to them. Rome is subject to whoever, whoever the, the hidden, hidden leader, leader is. is. And that, that includes, includes the Pope. pope. Now, now, the Pope, pope is a Jesuit, the first, the first Jesuit pope, pope that we know of. Mm-hmm. He's, He's not, not the... the... There, there have been, been other popes, popes who've been, been Jews, Jews, and, and nobody, nobody knew. knew. Okay. Uh, so, so, what, what you, you have, have is a, a, a very corrupt system, system that is being managed by a middle... Managing, managing, a, 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 middle a middle system of management, management and the Freemasons are making sure that everything gets done. They, they are, are your Boy Scouts. Scouts. Okay. okay. Okay, so, so the, uh, the Grand the Master, master the Hidden Grand Master, master gives an order, and uh, such, such and such, so and so, has to be favored, and so and so is out of favor, and such and such acquisition has to be made, and so it's done. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, this is why, why for, for example, example if, if you look at the, the especially in the UK, UK if you look at the the, um, uh, the, the, uh, the gendarmes, the, the, the police, uh, the police chiefs, 
Uh, there, are there are several, several individuals, individuals who are much, much more qualified, qualified than, than those who are actually, actually in office. office. Mm -hmm. And that's because of Freemasons. Okay. okay. And, and the, the Freemasons are essentially their yes, yes men. men. Now, so I, was I was a Freemason uh, for uh, three, three years, years. Uh, several, many years ago, more, more than 30 years ago. Years and and uh, I, I met some of the 30 33 30 30 30 30 Freemasons. I was invited to join by a 30 33 30 30 30 30 30 30 Freemason okay. who went, went to Washington to advise uh, uh, the president, the office of the president, on certain matters of security that had to do, that had to do with the geo political the deal uh, satellite that is uh, headquartered in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. This, this man took me on a personal tour of that facility, and this was back, back in 1988. Okay. And already then they, they, they were completely solar powered. They had uh, underwater hot water heating throughout the entire facility, the entire plant. It, it was, was just, just an amazing, amazing thing. thing. This, this man's, man's name is Ben Rich. Ben Rich, R A C H E. I think he's still alive. He's an elderly gentleman now, God bless him, or whatever. <laughs> it's, it's kind of a mixed bag, isn't it? Yeah. I sat, I, I sat across him. Well, he, he, he was helpful and kind to me at the time. I sat across the. We, 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 I, I, I was in medical school at the time. And. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm a musician, musician so, so to, to earn, earn a few extra dollars, dollars I, I, I played in the country of the Western band, band, and, and he, he was the guitar, guitar player. player. Okay. And, and he, he did this just, just for pure joy. joy. He, was he was director of security of this institution, of this institution for the field satellite that mapped that all of the mineral deposits in the entire globe. Oh, wow. They already knew what was where. Yeah. 30 years ago. They so already knew everything that was in Afghanistan. Afghanistan. The geo satellites, satellites were sharp enough, enough then to tell them, them. Yeah, yeah, through so whatever, whatever infrared technology they were using. Ben they told me this himself. Wow, wow. So, make sure to subscribe today and make sure you like and make sure you leave your comments and ideas. أشهد أن لا